Our next speaker this evening will be Dr. Satendra Bavsar. He is a research scientist with the Sportfish Contaminant Monitoring Program of the Ontario Ministry of the Environment. Um, he received his PhD in Chemical Engineering and Environmental Engineering from the University of Toronto and is a professional engineer. Um, at the Ministry of the Environment, his research focuses on studying contaminant fate transport, food web dynamics, exposure to uh, contaminants, um, that, those would be the exposure of humans to contaminants, um, through consumption of fish. Um, the overreaching goal of his work is to guide the policies and management uh, regarding contaminants in the environment in general, and specifically um, the safe consum human consumption of fish. He is the past chair of the Chemical Institute of Canada Toronto section, and currently the vice chair of the Brampton chapter of the Professional Engineers of Ontario. So, welcome to Tinra. Um, thanks, Stephanie and DRCA for providing me this opportunity. This is the second time I'm <coughs> coming to this event as a presenter, and, and I'm very glad to be here. And I certainly quickly flipped through the book when I was waiting here. Uh, I, I arrived early, and I really liked it. So I would like to thank the team of the, you know, uh, of the Fishes of Toronto, uh, because uh, on page 43, they have very nicely, um, you know, provided a text on guide tuning on target spot fish. That's what our, uh, my program works on. And it, it also advises on checking the latest studies of the guide. So thank you, the team of, of the book, for, for including that wonderful uh, piece of information. Um, I must say that TRCA is very diligent in planning this, uh, these events. Uh, they, this time they called me a little while ago and asked me if I would be available to speak tonight. And I agreed. And right after that, there was another email asking, okay, can you provide the title of your talk? And I was uh, quite busy with other things at that time, so I came up with a quick title, this one, and, and sent it along. And then, recently, I started working on the presentation. And then I, I realized that if you read this title critically, I don't really need to be here. Like, you know, I, I think the answer is quite obvious. You know, it's yes, because if you are eating fish in GTA, I don't think it's a risk because it's not banned to fish uh, to eat fish in GTA. I don't think there is a lack of fish in the, in the grocery store or, or or restaurants that people are going to attack you if you are eating fish. So it is safe to eat, but the 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 the, the accurate title should be: Is it safe to eat the fish that you catch from GTA water bodies? Let's say right. Not even grocery stores, just water body part. And that's why we are here for urban fishing and angling and whether it's safe to eat or not. Just so you know, that's the number one question everyone asks in angler fishing in Toronto. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. You don't eat the fish, do you? <laughs> number one question. Yeah. So um, anyway, uh, I, I will try to answer the, the, the correct question, whether it's uh, safe to eat the the fish from the water bodies of GTA or not. Uh, I'll begin with the background of our program so you understand you know, where do I come from and, and how we do what we do and how do we advise. And then I'll, I'll briefly summarize uh, some of the advisories that we have available for the GTA area and around the Toronto. So Ontario's spot fish contaminant monitoring program is probably, uh, you know, one of the best, if not the best in the world, it's very comprehensive and that's a result of a wonderful partnership between MOE and MNR and a number of other institutes and agencies, including TRCA. So that allows us to use our limited resources in a very efficient way and, and come up with very comprehensive fish consumption advisories. Uh, the program monitors both spot fish and juvenile fish, uh, including forage fish and young of the year since 1970s. So this program has been running for almost uh, 35, 40 years now. It was officially established in 1977, but the, the monitoring had actually started before that. Number of contaminants are, are monitored. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it in a brief, uh, in, in, a, in a minute. And about 2,000 locations so far across the province of Ontario have been sampled and advisories have been produced. The health risk has, uh, is assessed uh, in partnership with Health Canada, so we use their 
uh, suggested you know, uh, tolerable daily intake values um, and advise people on how much of a fish from a particular location for a particular type of fish, particular size of fish can safely eaten. Uh, the advisories are developed based on what is the most restrictive contaminant because there are a number of them and, and we communicate the risk to the stakeholders which is you know, anglers and, and general public. So this is a non-exhaustive list of contaminants that is monitored uh, in, in, the, in the program. So as you can see, there are some you know, legacy or traditional contaminants such as mercury, PCBs, dioxins, DDT, toxaphene, number of other organochlorine pesticides, uh, as well as contaminants of emerging concern. So these contaminants uh, weren't of concern 20 years ago, let's say. But uh, recently, you know, new research have highlighted that they could be concerned to the consumer. So uh, the carpet you see, probably it has some cap chemicals in it to, to retard fires, and that can degas, get into the environment, and get build up in, in fish. And we have started monitoring those uh, new uh, contaminants of uh, uh, concern as well. The risk is uh, communicated through a uh, number of publications. The main publication is a guide to eating Ontario spot fish. That's the booklet that we publish every other year. Uh, I had left a number of copies uh, back at the table, so it's, it's freely available. Please feel free to take one. I don't want to take them back. Um, and it's also available online, uh, the PDF copy you can download. Uh, apart from that, we have uh, um, brochures in 17 languages, so just in case if uh, English is not your first language, you can understand. Uh, the, the, the big chunk of the guide or the booklet is the table, so you don't really need to uh, know language. But uh, the first part, the introduction part, would provide you some basic information about uh, what we do, uh, what are the contaminants of concern, how to fillet a fish, how to reduce your exposure by removing belly fat and, and cooking and so on. So it's, it's a good read. If you are out uh, somewhere relaxing, it might be a, a good read for you. And obviously, checking the advisories is, is the main advantage. Uh, these are the locations, as I was mentioning, the 2,000 locations monitored so far, as you can see. Uh, a very good distribution. Normally, most of the, uh, most of the monitoring programs stop uh, around that line. And, and the far north is very difficult to monitor. But again, uh, in partnership with MNR, we have been able to cover a huge uh, portion of, of our very large province, and the individual advisories for each location have been provided in, in the booklet called Guide to Eating Ontario Spotfish. Uh, for the Great Lakes, as we know, very large lakes, and we would see quite a bit of difference in contaminant levels from one location to another. We have divided them in a smaller blocks, and, and it, it it was done in consultation with MNR biologists and depending on the history of contamination. So the size of the block varies. So what you can see here, uh, let me highlight Lake Ontario blocks. And what you see here, that area, block 4A, is the Toronto waterfront. So that's, uh, that's the block. And then you see part credit uh, light on your left side, block 5, which is... Uh, this is a credit river, and uh, the number three here is Hamilton Harbor. And then you see huge blocks, like open water blocks, uh, because we do see very minimal difference for, for that large open water area. So uh, again, advisories for the Great Lakes have been broken down in smaller blocks. You can check for that particular block wherever you are and, and, and follow the advisories. Now, how the advisories have been provided, that would be a question. So. What does this booklet do? For each location, you will find this kind of a table. Here, there are three tables, actually. Uh, the top one, this is just an example. Top one is for 4A, uh, Toronto waterfront area. And I just realized that I have a pointer available, which was told to me, but I forgot. So that's the Toronto waterfront area. That's the name of the location. These are the species in English and French. So it's, and, and the, again, the booklet is bilingual, so on the other side of the introduction you'll find in French and, and so on. So carp, white circle, rainbow smelt. Um, the advisories are for each individual species based on the size of the 
fish that you will catch. So uh, length is in centimeter and inches. So let's say if I caught a uh, 50 centimeter uh, or 48 centimeter carp from Toronto waterfront, um, I would look at this number here. So one mil per month uh, is safe for me. And, and the gray line is for sensitive population, which is defined as uh, women of childbearing age and children under 15, because their brain is still developing and some contaminants uh, are more susceptible. So, so we have separate advisories for that sensitive population. So white line is for general population and gray line is for sensitive population. Okay, um, last thing about the program, the advisories are available online, not only in the PDF form of that booklet, but also in an interactive map. And this is probably, again, uh, the best in its class that you can find worldwide. So um, our ministry did this last year, so it was released last March. And as you can see, it's, uh, th this is just a snapshot of the website. And this map here is very interactive. It's a Google-based map. Uh, you can enter your search term here. So if you enter Toronto, it will show like the locations around the Toronto. And these are all the locations uh, that we have advisories available for. So you click on it and, and it will give you advisories. There are a number of other things that you can do. You can lock certain area, like once you zoom in, you can lock the area and then look for a particular species advisories. And I'll, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Okay, so with that background, um, I was asked to talk about urban fishing. So I said, okay, let me check how many cities we have in Ontario. And this is based on certain definition, obviously, probably 20,000 population or some sort of cutoff. So I use a GIS level, uh, layer, um, a, a colleague of mine, and he prepared this map for me. So there are about 66 cities in, in Ontario. And we looked at, okay, how many locations with the advisories we have within 10 kilometers of that city uh, I don't know how does it calculate whether it takes the center of, a, uh, of the city and then 10 kilometers. So for, for Toronto, actually, it would be probably underestimation. But we have about 105 locations listed for just that 10 kilometer radius of the city. If I increase this from 10 to 25 kilometers, we have about 225 something locations with advisories available. So that's a quite a bit of locations. Uh, uh, if you compare with number of other jurisdictions uh, in number of other countries, you find that that's their whole monitoring program. So we have a good uh, number of locations, uh, urban locations with advisories for. If you zoom in for the southern part, you can see again there are a number of locations within like that city area. Um, now, this is again from our interactive map, that Google-based map that I was showing. So if you zoom in, you search under Toronto, this is how uh, you, you would look at. So all these symbols are individual locations that we have advisories available for. So you click on the location. I search under Toronto, right? So that's why it was showing me this. But um, yeah, like when you zoom in, you find all these locations in that area. Um, these are the same locations. It's in a different map format. It's from GIS, but with some names attached to the locations. So what you can see is, you know, Toronto Waterfront uh, is Lake Ontario 4A block, um, Eglinton Flats Pond, Centennial Park, Humber River, Dawn River, uh, Professor's Lake in Brampton, and uh, that Lake Ontario Block 5, which is Credit River, very famous for the, for the salmon spawning run, right? Okay, let me start uh, with Waterfront. So as we know, uh, Waterfront is, uh, is a very... Uh, popular area for the fishing, and this table is about the advisories that we have for the waterfront. Now, I understand it's very difficult for you to, to check what I'm showing here on this slide, especially from the back, but obviously I'm not expecting you to remember all this or even follow all these numbers. What I want to highlight is in this particular table, I forgot to count, but there are a number of species already included for the advisories, and and most of the time, these are the species that people are, uh, you know, looking for for consumption. So we see walleye, pumpkin seed, northern pike that was shown earlier, uh, and uh, yellow perch, a uh, number of other species. Again, these are the numbers uh, for sensitive and general populations. Meals per month you can eat safely. If you, if you click on the link here, this is from online version. So it's a bit different from the format you see in the published booklet. 
But if you click on the link here, it takes you to the MNR's website and you can learn more about each fish that they have on their website. So their habitats and spawning and all that. So it's, it's also another good educational tool. So Toronto Waterfront, overall, what you will find is there are num number of eights and fours and zeros and one, almost everything. So eight mils per month is what we advise as a maximum consumption. So it's like unrestricted. And this is based on our survey that we did in past. People normally don't eat more than eight meals per month of spot caught fish. So that's eight meals per month is good. And obviously zero is do not eat. So that's bad. Um, and what you see here, let's say if you look at largemouth bass, general population, all the way from 15 centimeter to 45 centimeter, we see eight meals per month. For the, for the same species, for sensitive population, it's like eight meals per month up to 30 centimeters and then four meals per month. So relatively uh, very less restrictive uh, advisories. In contrast, if you look at the lake trout, uh, advisories one meals per month from 35 to 40 centimeters and then all across it's zero meals per month. Another thing that you would notice, as you go for a larger size fish, it gets more restrictive. So two things, uh, fish as they grow, you know, they, they are aged and they have spent more time in the water body to accumulate uh, contaminants in their body. So larger fish is relatively more, generally more contaminated compared to their smaller counterparts. So if you want to reduce your exposure, try to eat smaller fish. Second thing, uh, fatty fish, they accumulate some of the contaminants, organic contaminants that like to bind to fatty tissues. So something like lake trout here, is more restrictive because uh, PCBs are organic chemicals, they bind to fatty tissues, and lake trout is a fatty fish compared to uh, largemouth bass. So try to reduce your exposure by removing belly fat uh, and, and removing fat by cooking it on grill, let the, let the fat drip off, and, and that's where you can reduce your exposure to some contaminants, not all. Um, but my take home from this slide is there are advisories available uh, for a number of species. There are some uh, advisories that are more restrictive than the others, and you should check the, uh, the table before you eat. Okay, let's move on to another location, um, Eglinton Flat Spawn, and that's also covered, I believe, in that book uh, that Chris mentioned in, uh, in uh, the previous presentation. So this is what I found. It, 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 it has a good article in Inside Toronto, and I, I would suggest to read it. It's a very nice place within this urban environment, as you can see from these pictures. And people do come uh, there for various recreational activities, including playing cricket. That's not baseball, by the way. It's cricket with three stumps there. Um, so it's, you can see like it's a wonderful place to go with family or individual for, for fishing. Uh, you see some urban environment here, but it looks like kind of, you know, nature in the middle of, of, of urban environment. So, wonderful place to fish. How about eating? These are the advisories available in the guide, and you see most of the numbers are 8 meals per month, or 4 meals per month for sensitive population in some cases, and, and very few, like 0 meals per month. So, so a wonderful location to go for fishing if you are within, within the city, you can't get away from the city. You know, um, I, I thought that I, I would like to get out of the city, let's say, just for a break last weekend, and they forecast rain on, on Saturday, and I thought, okay, I wouldn't get out, and it didn't rain. So if you are in, in city and you want to just get out, do something, I think this is a, this is a very good place to go. Another good place, uh, Centennial Park Pond, if you look at the advisories, almost everything that we have measured for is eight meals per month. So. By the way, I forgot to mention, so when you don't see a number, that means we don't have data to provide advisory. So when we were out and, and or MNR uh, staff were out, they caught this size range of fish, um, and, and that's why we have advisories available for that. And what you can see again, um, everything, eight meals per month, and uh, uh, there are four species that we have listed. Uh, if we find more species in future, obviously we will update these tables. Um, the, the last uh, location I would like to highlight from this map is the Credit River. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's a very popular uh, location for uh, just go out and watch salmon uh, spawning runs. You know, you see big 
uh, big fish uh, floating around, jumping in uh, out of the water. Uh, look at the advisories. Um, Again, don't need to remember the numbers, but you see that you know number of zeros for sensitive populations or fours. Even for general population, uh, it's like two meals per month or one meal per month. In some cases, uh, there are eight meals per month, but mostly relatively restrictive advisories. And the reason, again, all these four species are fatty fish. They spend most of their time in Lake Ontario, and uh, you know the accumulate contaminants. They come here. And, and that's why the advisories are more restrictive. Now, you may feel like, wow, it's really restrictive. The, so does that mean that Lake Ontario has very high levels of contaminants? Well, this is what I would like to show here. This is a figure that I took from a published a research article from a scientific paper um, based on those credit river uh, salmon long-term monitoring data for various chemicals. So two columns here are for Chinook and Coho Salmon. I know it's a very busy slide. I just want to highlight a couple of things here. And uh, different panels here are for five different chemicals. So PCBs, Myrex, DDT, sorry, four different chemicals, uh, and mercury. And there are a number of things here, but the, if you just follow quickly, like blue line, you know, it's not always like straight line decline, but it declines and then slows and so on. But if you connect first and last dot on this plot, it tells that over the last 30, 40 years, the levels have declined by as much as more than 90%. Uh, PCB used to be like around 4,000 nanogram per gram. They are now around you know, 300, 400 nanogram per gram. So levels have declined dramatically. This does mean that it's safer to eat now than it was 30 years ago. The advisories are still very restrictive. The reason, our guidelines uh, for issuing the advisories have gone down as well. So in past, we used to consider 2,000 nanogram per gram as a good, uh, and that's where our advisories would start. Now it starts at 100 nanogram per gram, so 20 times lower. So that's why the advisories are still restrictive, but overall environment has improved significantly for all these chemicals. Okay, so... Um, before I move to the next slide, and now I, you might have heard something. But which are the two most uh, fish that people like to consume in Ontario? Walleye, yeah. You, uh, just in case if you didn't see, but yeah, walleye is definitely the first one. So I'm going to talk about walleye. Which one is the other one? Perch. Perch, wow. So yeah, you are seasoned anglers. I'm talking to anglers. OK, now I know. OK, so let's look at walleye advisories first. Um, as I mentioned, you can search. Um, so you log this, like once you zoom into this interactive map, uh, you, you can log. There is a, like I, I don't have it here, but there is a button. So there is a, there's a check mark. So you, you click that, and it locks that area. And then you search for walleye as a species. And it will highlight all the locations that we have walleye in, in the advisory tables. So what you see here for this for this particular area, this, I think this is dying. Um, OK, so these are all the locations with, uh, for which we have advisories available. But these ones have walleye advisories in, in the tables. So let's look at a couple of locations. So this one is in Cambridge. Um, it's a Puslinch Lake. And what you see uh, for the walleye, it's like 8 mils per month for general population from 35 to 55 centimeters and 8 and 4 mils per month for sensitive population. So very you know, lenient advisories and very good place to go for walleye fishing and eating. Another one is in Brentford. It's a Grand River location. And what you see here is 8 mils per month from 25 to 60 centimeters for general population and eights and fours and zero for sensitive population. Again, a good location to go for walleye fishing and eating. Um, on the other side of the city, if you go to French Men's Bay, again, eight meals per month. And if you go to Whitby Harbor, quite a bit of eight meals per month, up to 65 centimeters. So there are a number of locations, even around Toronto, if you are not just from Toronto, but living in Cambridge, Brentford, uh, or Pickering, Oshawa, there are locations that you can go for popular fishing and eating. Um, okay, so now how about the perch? Now perch is more abundant, and we have a number of locations even around GTA that you can find advisories available for. 
So these are again all the locations we have perched in the advisory tables. And I just kind of summarize all of them together here. So these are the locations, about 12 locations, and general and sensitive uh, population advisories. And you see almost everything except the three numbers in red um, are eight meals per month. So wonderful locations nearby your place to go for perch fishing and you can eat them safely. And yeah, safely means uh, from contaminant point of view, not from crime point of view. With that, uh, I would like to uh, mention something many times people ask, like, can I eat? And some people think, oh, yeah, don't listen, you know, advisories and all that. But it does uh, make impact on your health. Uh, there are a number of, uh, you know, research articles, medical articles published on it that they do, if, you know, affect your health. So uh, personally, I would highly recommend that you check before you eat. So... Um, the, the true question, I was going to change this, but I didn't. Anyway, so the true question, is it safe to eat? Did I answer that question through this presentation? I'm glad to see that, that I answered. But is it safe to eat? Yes. So mostly yes. But, but what? Check. Oh, my gosh, you guys are pro. Yes, check the guy before you eat, not after you eat, okay? Thank you very much for your attention.